So Adam likes to take credit for things that he did not do. Uh, the conservative majority, the super majority in Columbia, has been responsible for passing constitutional care, for advancing school choice, for uh, doing all of these things that he says that he is responsible for. But that's just not the case. He is on the fringe of issues. He does not vote them. And he said in his announcement, and he said in mail or subsequent, and get it for you, that I vote them. He doesn't vote them. Whether he meant to vote uh, to imprison rape and incest victims, I don't know. Maybe he's changing his mind now because he did. I promise you, you're going to be seeing that. Josiah wrote the bill, and he voted for it. Jo Josiah wrote the amendment, and he voted for it. I also want to point out, in the 70s, all of our textile jobs went overseas, to China specifically. And our leaders, 35 years ago, were able to incentivize BMW to come here. I represent 800,000 people. I would say at least 150,000 of those jobs are from BMW, from those decisions. So I would argue that he doesn't vote right on economic development. I, so voting right is not everything, but it is the core thing. And I vote right consistently. I would argue that he does not. And the tactics that he has exhibited in Columbia that has, have caused him to uh, earn the distrust of his colleagues, to, to, to not respect his advocacy, is not something that's going to solve the challenges that are facing this country. We're not going to be able to scream and yell and uh, engage in these theatrics to fix debt. It is going to take a bipartisan effort. We're not going to be able to to get the economy back where it needs to be. We're not going to be able to secure the southern border. We have to do all of these things. And you're not going to do it by banding together with the loudest voices in the room. You're just not. My experience as a prosecutor, my experience as a small business owner, my experience as a captain in the South Carolina National Guard, and my record in Washington is what has caused me to be endorsed by dozens and dozens of my colleagues, including President Trump. I work hard, I get results, I am extremely accessible to 800,000 people. I have earned the trust of my colleagues, I've earned the respect of my colleagues, and that's what makes me effective. And that's what I'm gonna do next Congress and help President Trump preserve the American dream for generations to come. I don't know that I could have a more clear presentation. Go back to the question you asked before. The idea that socializing and the private sector and being engaged in corporate welfare and corporate cronyism, that that is something to be proud of and to hit me on when I am literally fighting for something that is in the Republican Party platform to end the, the waste of taxpayer money on socializing the private sector, giving taxpayer money from certain companies to their competitors to try to plan and develop the economy by government bureaucrats, that's, it's just baffling to me. And I think it, just, it, it helps inform all of you. Like, think to your roots. Think to your core values, what you believe, what you espouse, what you teach your children, what you want to see the future of our country. You do have a choice. You have a choice between the two of us. It's clearly presented before you today. I am thrilled and honored to be in this room with so many of you. Some of you have endorsed me, like Sheriff Hobart Lewis, and uh, Congressman Ralph Norman, and uh, some of the people I mentioned earlier that are in higher offices. And I, I'm thrilled to have those, General Flynn, and Matt Gates, some different conservative fighters from different areas. But you know, the people that I get most excited about having the endorsement of, they all live in districts, and they're all the local grassroots fighters that I watch through Facebook. I watch through Facebook as the allegation that I've not actually been involved, that me and my group, we haven't actually accomplished any of the conservative stuff. I saw your faces because so many of you, some of you who I don't always agree with, sometimes we go back and each other, but you know what? I show up in district. 
I show up to people who I get along with, people that I disagree with, we go back and forth, we fight for our values. I show up, I speak up, and South Carolina is better for it. I want to fight for you. I want to fight with you. I want to lock arms with the fellow patriots of this area, Greenville, Spartanburg, and I want to take D.C. by storm with upstate South Carolina values. Show kind of, but honestly, I really, I just want to put myself on your ballot with my record. Go fact check everything we're saying. Go watch the speeches, see what we've done for years, and make a choice. It's your choice. Who do you want to represent you? I would be thrilled and privileged and honored to represent you. I love my work at Majesty Music and Passion Pirate. And I love my family, and I know that there's, this is a sacrifice, as the state level has been. But it is a worthy, valiant effort because we have a country to save, we have kids' futures on the lines, and I want to fight for you. Thank you so much.